Good morning, viewers. At least it's morning in Muskoka, Ontario, Canada. Friday, June the 8th. We're here at the Muskoka Boat and Heritage Center, and the Toronto chapter of the Antique and Classic Boat Society has prepared a media event to help the press and other media representatives get a better understanding of the Antique and Classic Boat Society International Boat Show in Gravenhurst this coming July the 7th. We're going to shortly hear some snippets of speeches, uh, presentations being given in the center. And if we're lucky afterwards, we may head out on the lake for a brief boat cruise. I'm going to pan around quickly before the meeting begins and just give you a glimpse of Arizu, a beautiful, beautiful Edwardian steam launch. This, I think, is a fairly new addition to the museum's display collection. This boat is so magnificent, it looks like a complete reproduction. Magnificent form 
thanks to a, a collector in uh, Minnesota who's a wonderful guy. And if you come to the little show, you'll meet him because he's going to be here. And he's as much a part of this celebration as anybody. Uh, not just because he funded it, it's more than that. He's got a passion and the way he goes about doing things and so on. And the boat has been is being toured around North America, which is unusual. Uh, I don't know one that's been toured like this to as many shows in a professional way. We also, uh, in part of this celebration, and Kathy Rhodes stood up here a minute ago and talked about the 100 Mile Cruise, but she's also more famous for being the editor of Classic Boat Magazine. And in this magazine, we have, of course, the story of Matoka, but we also have an unprecedented cover. I can't hold it with my mind too well, but to my knowledge, never been done before. And, and it's a uh, terrific celebration of the boat, fun way to look at it. There's a 2,800 word story in there that, that uh, gives you lots of detail, and, and I urge you to read it because it's, you know, it should engage you and it should give you some insights about the family or of it and all, all the rest of the detail. So it's, uh, it's the other thing we're doing with Tolka, which isn't necessarily part of the ACD show, but there's so much material that we've collected on this boat. There is a website, it's going to be called tolkaboat.com, it will be launched very shortly. There, there will be Super 8 movies on there of Polka in the summer in Muskoka, things like that. Ian Turbo gave me some information uh, about steamships and so on that we're going to put it on. So we're trying to share that, um, all that information with the world, right? Not just keep it inside Classic Boat, but put it out there and as it tours around, hopefully get the interest of people and share all of it. So, uh, I, I'm going to end this because you need to get out and try some boats, and we talked enough this morning. But thank you for your attention, and enjoy the show. <laughs> thank you. The first time I go to World of uh, North American Tour of Tolkien, just won the People's Choice Award at uh, Keels and Wheels in Houston, Texas. So it's uh, really lovely to go. Okay, now the fun part. Um, we're just delighted that a number of uh, our members and others have volunteered to bring a boat down today to, so we can all have a little fun. I'll just start over here, Alan Cranfield. Is, is Chimo here, Alan? Wonderful. Gary Clark's right beside him. Gary uh, has uh, Murder Walker's uh, Curlew, uh, a very uh, exceptional streamliner. Um, uh, Greg Martin has uh, his uh, gentleman racer, uh, Lightning. Uh, Jerry uh, Lodge has a wonderful, his wonderful boat at Edith 2. Uh, Chris Bowen, I think Chris is here. Oh, well, there it is. Uh, Chris is here with his boat. Um, what's the name? I can never quite get it right. Caracas. Caracas, thank you. Uh, and uh, where's Clancy? Clancy is uh, here with his boat. Uh, you, the name of your boat, Clancy? Or it doesn't have any? Not boot. It Pardon? doesn't have a name, but it's called the Rubette. It's called the Rubette. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the floating violin. <laughs> right. Uh, yes. Uh, Stradivarius, I would call him. Uh, anyway, um, Greg Martin, if I could ask you to just tell us where we should do, where we should go. And uh, uh, we much appreciate it. Uh, now, we'll all be back. Uh, we're a little ahead of the schedule, which is great. Uh, and so we're going to have a little tour around, and then uh, we'll come back here and for some uh, lunch, burgers, and uh, conversation. And I think Jan has one or other thing to say. Viewers, we're continuing the press familiarization tour for the uh, upcoming ACBS show on July 7th in Gravenhurst. And ACBS members have been kind enough to offer brief tours in some of their antique and classic boats. Lovely Gravette. <laughs> Viewers, here we have Chimo, a ditch burn, beautiful ditch burn. Got to be 30 feet. And she certainly seems to have been repowered with a more contemporary power plant.
mother-in-law seat at the front. <laughs> Here we have the uh, iconic Gravet Curlew. Beautiful, beautiful double-ended Gravette with the streamliner lines in her. This is quite an amazing boat. Luckily we have a great day with some sun for this little mini tour. We've just boarded Shimo viewers and Alan Cranfield, the owner, is going to be taking us for a brief tour around the Gravenhurst section of Lake Muskoka. I hope we we'll get away from the passengers. be careful docking and uh, leaving the dock in a boat like this. How long have you owned Chimo, Alan? Um, actually, it's Chimo. Chimo, sorry. Um, I've owned uh, Chimo since uh, 1997. Wow. I actually don't know the history of it before the mid-40s. It was bought by a man named uh, Stanley English. And he ran uh, tours and with the boat up at the lodges up in uh, Lake Grasso and Joseph. Wow. And probably down here too at Muskoka. Yeah. And did you have to do much restorative work with it? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, it was restored in 19, uh, 1977 by uh, Vic Carpenter, who, who was a wonderful. He was a wonderful craftsman, but he restored it sort of semi, it's sort of half ditch burn, and half minute shields. And so, uh, a few years ago, Gary Clark uh, took the decking off the floors and the seating out and turned it back into uh, a, a real minette shield. Okay. So this is very much like it was when it, in the 40s anyway, because I have pictures of it. And then it was on Lake Tomogamy for about, uh, from about 1955, 1956 until 1997 when I, when I found it. I was very lucky to get it because there really aren't very many of these boats around and they never change hands. Yes, and it's a real icon. But you've changed the power plant on it, or someone's changed the power plant, yeah, I presume. That was changed in, uh, in 1977 during that, that restoration. And um, it's a Chrysler 440, it's a 1969 engine. The original engine was a, was a great big, uh, it was called a uh, Hall Scott. Right. And the boat's always been very fast, and it's still it's still very fast. But, but even with the old engine, it was very fast. Those engines are very very difficult to maintain, and they're not really that safe. Yes. And they're not that reliable. Yes. One of the Makes sense. In a boat like this, you don't want. You know, in my mind, all my boat. I have two other boats as well, but uh, they all have modern power because um, I just I don't want to be stuck out there, and I don't want the thing blowing yes. up. Yes. So. Yeah. You use all of your boats by the sound of it. They're not just show pieces. Oh no, uh, I use them. I use them a lot. I, I don't have any plastic boats actually. I, I if I go boating, it's in one of my boats. Yes. No. Uh, well, this is certainly a beauty. Yeah, this is a very very pretty boat. You know, it's, it's now it's fast, even though it's not a tradition, not a more contemporary planing hull. No, it's, it's, it's a displacement hull. hull. But it probably does uh, in excess of 30, 30 miles an hour. Wow. Oh, I guess the length helps. The, the length along the water line helps with it's almost like a, yeah. a torpedo in a sense. Yeah, yeah. the hull speed is, is the longer the boat, the higher the, the hull speed. At least in this displacement. Yes. So. Well, it's a wonderful vessel, and it's a treat to be on it. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome.
terms of length, Alan, it would be 30, 30 feet? 34. 30, 34 and a half. 34 and a half feet, viewers. And this uh, boat will be at the show on the... So viewers, if you want a chance to see this boat in person, come to the show. Here we are, viewers, with a final view of Chimo. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful boat.
34 feet of wooden eye candy. Over and out. Before we leave the docks, viewers, just a final view of a lovely disappearing propeller boat. Viewers, I couldn't resist. Walking back along the dock, came across this amazing Peterborough runabout. Had no idea Peterborough made boats with fiberglass combos, fiberglass wood combinations. Powered by a 30 horsepower Johnson. Looks like it dates from the 60s, I would expect. Seater. Looks like a beautiful rounded mahogany high mahogany uh, ply dash. Lovely upholstery. Beautiful condition. And of course those 50s, 60s fins on the stern end. Viewers, on the way back to Huntsville, we couldn't resist stopping off at Paul Brackley's Gravenhurst Boat Shop to check on the progress that Paul and his staff are making with the big Chris Craft cabin cruiser that they began work on last year. Let's see it. What? Let's go in and see what stage they're at. Viewers, uh, Mike and Rick here have been working on the big Chris Craft, and uh, Mike tells me that uh, there are now four or five coats of varnish uh, on the exterior. And uh, of course, I guess it's wet sanded between each coat. And a new uh, canvas top has been put on the uh, stern section of the cabin. The roof is off, as you can see. And uh, the roof is across the street at the moment. And I guess uh, it's a uh, new canvas on that as well. Any ideas when the project will be finished? No. It, uh, that's going to be determined. Fall or spring, apparently. Let's just take a look on board. Wow. What a difference from last time. Dash has been all stripped, or replaced. Stripped, I guess. And looks like uh, new benches, or certainly refurbished benches. Of course, it's much brighter in here with the roof off. Beautiful woodwork. And uh, you can see the nice work that's been done on this new canvas roof. Makes me wonder whether Chris Craft shouldn't have come with glass roofs. Transom is all finished off, and uh, looks like the hatch work is being done here. This is precision woodworking at its finest. We <laughs> try. I'm sure you do, and you do a great job. We'll come back, viewers, in a few weeks, I hope, and uh, see how the progress uh, continues on this beautiful Chris Craft.